All right, so I'm still in Wichita. I promise you this is my last museum, at least in the Wichita area. I'm actually in Hutchinson, and this is the Cosmosphere. Uh, I guess it's more of a uh, space-related museum. The actual Apollo 13, the Odyssey space uh, capsule is here. So I'm coming to see that specifically, but let's see what else is here. How incredible is that? SR-71. To be able to... My hands on that. Look at that. Man, this thing even still to this day is so futuristic looking. It's a better shot of the belly of the... Uh, SR-71 Alright, here we go Headed down to the museum There you go. Wow, in case you were wondering what a spaceship's toilet looks like. <laughs> there you go. Gee, I wonder what that's for. That's some wet trash right there. So this is a lunar module. This thing is way bigger than I thought it would be, or that I pictured in my mind. It's, it's uh, a good, I don't know, 25 feet tall, something like that. It seriously looks like, like a child made it or something. It just looks like a bunch of tin foil. <laughs> Before you stands an Apollo Lunar Module or LM spacecraft, one of the most unique, complex, and costly pieces of hardware ever devised by mankind. That's crazy. So yeah, after using this to land on the moon and completing their lunar exploration, the two astronauts climbed back into the Lunar Module for a liftoff that would rejoin them with their orbiting crew members in the Command Module. 1968 to 1972. This is a lunar roving vehicle, the LRV. It says at a cost of over six million dollars per unit, the lunar roving vehicle was undoubtedly the most expensive car ever built. Each wire mesh wheel was equipped with its own half horsepower electric motor giving the vehicle true four-wheel drive. Power was supplied by two 36 volt silver zinc batteries. All four wheels were used for steering, although the front wheels could be disconnected from the rear in case of damage. Oh, 
Oh, this thing is pretty awesome. The supersonic torture chair. Displayed here is the Sonic Wind 2 rocket propelled test sled, an extraordinary piece of hardware that was instrumental in answering questions regarding the durability of the human body. The sled was propelled down a test track at Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico by as many as nine solid fuel rocket motors. Between 1955 and 1958, the Sonic Wind 2 made 21 supersonic runs down test tracks at Holloman and at China Lake in California. Many of the runs reached speeds in excess of a thousand miles an hour, or Mach 1.3. The variety of test subjects ranging from stuffed animal dummies to guinea pigs, hogs, and chimpanzees were placed on the front of the sled to test their response to the extremely high g-forces they experienced during these runs. I mean, what do you get in a race car? 5 g's? Something like that? 40 g's in this. This is one of the actual units removed from one of the original mission, mission control rooms in Houston. It says this specific console was used by the flight surgeon or mission doctor to monitor astronaut medical conditions. It's a crazy analog system here. Now here's a great few examples of what the food was like. If you were an astronaut in the 1960s, it looks like throw up, but it's food. Spaghetti with meat sauce. <laughs> oh, and you had to start your day off with uh, sugar coated cornflakes. Ugh. This is pretty interesting. In 1957, the Russians put Sputnik 2 into space and it had the first living creature on Earth in orbit. A small da dog named Laika. Huh. Never knew that. And there he is. And here it is, the Apollo 13 space capsule. Now who hasn't seen Apollo 13, the movie? If you haven't seen it, you need to watch it. It's a very, very well-made movie. And this is the real thing. Wow. So let me jump in here real quick. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Apollo 13 history, it was supposed to be the third landing on the moon, but that lunar landing was aborted after an explosion in the service module two days into the mission. A routine stir of the oxygen tanks ignited wire insulation causing the explosion, which then started venting their fresh air out into space. Now obviously there is much more to this story, but that's a quick rundown. It was a very tense time for everyone, but all the astronauts returned to Earth safely. And this is the actual capsule that they returned in. Even if you have not seen that movie, I'm sure you would know this quote. Houston, we have a problem. This is where it comes from. In all actuality, I think the real quote was, Houston, we've had a problem. Or, okay, Houston, we've had a problem. So this one-sixth scale model of the Apollo 13 shows its condition 
following the devastating explosion that nearly destroyed the spacecraft's service module. Unknowingly, a mistake made during pre-flight tests activating a heater unit inside one of the oxygen tanks that powered the fuel cells left the spacecraft as a bomb ready to explode. Wow, look at this. This is the actual spacesuit worn by Apollo 13 Commander James A. Lovell during the ill-fated voyage to the moon, April 11th to the 17th in 1970. Again, the lighting in here and the reflections are horrible, but you still get to see it. So, there you have it, or there's most of it. The Cosmosphere Museum here, Space Museum, is amazing in Hutchinson, Kansas. Definitely check it out if you're in the area. There's way more to see here. I couldn't even show even half of what was here, but I mainly came for what I showed you, specifically the Apollo 13 capsule, which was amazing to see. So, hope you liked it. See you in the next video.